Greetings and felicitations from Geek Public Broadcasting. This is Playtest. I'm your host, Alan Michael Carter. So we are back today with a as of yet unnamed game created by um someone that I, I follow over on Twitter named Thomas, I believe, Thomas Keen. And you can follow this person over at at Kobo's Bold's Keep. That is K-O-B-O-L-D-S-K-E-E-D. You can follow them over at, at, um, at, at Twitter over there. Um, I've been following them over there. And this is a prototype they've put out for a limited 12-hour period. And this is our second episode into this series. So we are going to continue. So essentially, we are back where I had, had died last time. And we were saying that what this was essentially proving to us was that, up, oh, you got to be careful because. Bet, bet, bet. No. Bet, bet, bet. Uh. Ooh. In just a moment, we have discovered another interesting. Okay, I was just saying, we discovered another interesting thing there, is that was almost more of like a little boss there. Like, not a full boss, but like a little bit of a harder encounter I hadn't noticed. I believe that one may have been a different color. It took a few more hits to take out, which I wasn't expecting. As I was saying, um, the water there will put out your torch, so you've just learned another part of the, kind of this chemistry system idea that's kind of similar to like a, a Breath of the Wild type deal where different parts of the environment and gameplay systems interact with each other. So a lot of the gameplay is probably going to be about noticing and mixing and matching of how things can come together. And I'm going to move forward. Oh, another thing I had missed from last episode that we're seeing here again. I had, um, I'd seen it, but I didn't. I'm trying to get used to pointing out everything that I see as I go through it. If I think that's a good talking point, um, my worry is that it will get kind of repetitive over over series, but um, we'll find ways to spice it up if that happens. If we're just seeing a lot of same thing between games, but anyway, we're gonna go in and we're gonna talk about that idea. Earlier was that um, if you took the upper path earlier, there was a plant enemy. Then you would have seen that as you walked past, you could no longer approach, you can no longer progress. Eventually you reach a part where only the lower holes is open, so you can't, you can't go any forward. Now you realize, okay, I've got to fight the plant monster now. Not only does it show you that, okay, there was an alternate path, but that ultimate path was a dead end, so not every path is going to be the way forward. It also showed that, okay, now we actually have to, like, confront another one of these enemies in a slightly different way, where now, like, by default, it's hitting, um... It's hitting low, so we're going to have to block low. And it also showed that maybe we will get an ability in the future that lets us get through these single tile holes, um, a la a Metroid. Perhaps, I do not know. I do not know how, if you get abilities in this game, or if this is more of just the chemistry deal. But we're going to be going forward now. And we've reached a sword. Oh no, and we've almost fallen. But we've gotten the sword. Your sword broke. Press U to switch weapons. Okay. That was clever. That was cute. I I, I enjoyed that. What's a nice little joke? So maybe that's indicative of this game. Maybe that's showing us about this game's like sense of humor. You could also see in the in the um exuberant expression of of the main character sprite when they got an item. They seemed very cheery. It wasn't like a super serious, like, oh, I've, I've upgraded and I'm so powerful. It was more of like a cheery, like, yay, I got something. Like, I'm all powerful now. And that was kind of fun and neat and kind of a, a turn there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, oh, now we, yeah, we've, we've lost, we've lost everything. We've been denied again. And perhaps this once again is on purpose. If we had that fire, if we had not picked up this sword, I could have used that fire to come here and get these guys. Now I'm going to have to go back. Oh, a new thing I have learned. It seems like if I press the W key up when I'm in the air, then I do like a little up air stab. 
Interesting. Okay. So we're going to come back here and use the, you to switch weapons and switch back and get our fire torch. And now we can go ahead and get this that we got trolled out of the first time by by picking the sword first. But we're still able to go back and get our 20 argon. And now we're going to make this jump and light another torch. The, lighting the torches is a nice little fun thing that you get to like do as you go through the game. It's kind of fun to light the torches, so. That's an interesting mechanic. Uh, the, oh no! Oh, and now my torch is gone. I'm seeing multiple types of fire here. I'm wondering if this is going to come into play at some point. Okay, so we have a teleporter. So we have a teleport system. Okay. Press U to switch weapons. Yeah, I know that. Now, we're going to go forward with this blue fire. And perhaps that was on purpose. Perhaps they purposely wanted us to get the blue fire. And why it told us to switch to you. Danger, turn back. Uh, okay, yep. I did not like that. I, I am glad to do that. Thank you. You know, I'm probably going to have to go back there anyway eventually. This may just lead me back towards the beginning of the game. But... I think for me that what was there was that that sudden change in music. It was very sudden. It was actually a very effective game design choice. Um, I would say typically you do not want to transfer music that harshly. But you see that it gave the intended effect. It it, it quite it, it kind of scared me. I was like, OK, and then the giant arrows, the giant sign just saying turn back combined with the suddenly startled of I'm listening to the relaxing music, I'm just kind of exploring the cave, and then suddenly I see tons of enemies and the lights are low and it's playing danger music and it says turn back, I'm like, yep I do not want none of this business right now so, um, I'm glad you gave me that opportunity, um, someone like I'm um, Devil's Biggies, which some of you may know on the channel from some of our other programming, um, he probably would have went all in with it, so, um, and maybe it would have allowed him to succeed, like that's the, that's the kind of fun of a game like this, it seems like, which is trying to be like, I feel like that Metroidvania style game is that, um, oftentimes there can be multiple paths forward, depending on how, you know, kind of how your, your gameplay style is. Like, you can oftentimes in those games, like, get to some content early if you're willing to be, like, particularly clever or particularly brave. You can get into, like, some dangerous areas earlier than you should be able to. But we're going to go down to see what happens if we go down. And let's see if we take, take the warrior's path. Not the warrior as in fighter, but warrior as in someone that's worried about their survival. It seems like I'm going to be trapped into not being able to get my fire over. So it seems like we've run into another mechanic of this game. It seems like we're going to have a lot to do with this torchlight. And keeping it lit. As you can see, there's quite a bit of water in this cave. And now if I want to light these things and keep my safety, I have to avoid water. So in a weird way, water has almost become like... Like something that, that's like not something that you want. It's kind of dangerous. And these torches also now, we realize that was just kind of fun to light them. But we almost realize now that these act as a pseudo checkpoint system, I believe. That's what the intent is here. And of course, all of these things are my conjecture, of course. I am never speaking for the developer. I do not have inside knowledge. I am passing out on other people's content. I am simply giving my interpretation of what's being presented to me and um, speaking at it about it in a more mindful way. Perhaps you could say that I am trying to engage greatly. But moving forward, um, essentially, yes, this kind of acts as a because this is always going to be lit. If I do mess up and get in the water, I can always come back here and light my fire again. So it acts as a pseudo checkpoint system in a way. So we're going to move forward up like right there. I just messed up, but now I can go back and get more fire. 
And I wonder if there's ever going to be a point in the game where water is seen as a good thing. So will there be some dual purpose to the water? Or is water always going to be seen as this this bad thing? And then I wonder, of course, like, will the water, is the water going to, like, the visuals of the water, um, like, are they meant to represent, like, kind of something that's beautiful, but kind of dangerous at the same time, almost like ice? Like that really clear, sharp water you get from caverns sometimes? Or is this water meant to be more, like, dangerous, like, almost poisonous, almost like the water becomes, like, oh, something to be scared of that's, like, scary in appearance as well? Or will it be scary yet beautiful? Like, is that, is, like, which is meant to be taken by, by the amount of water that we're going to be seeing? And we have lit the final torch here, perhaps. And we are moving forward. Alright, so... Let's... We have another little platform challenge up. And we've been seeing a treasure that we know that we're going to be able to get moving forward. So, let's go ahead and go down and do this and... Okay, this activated something interesting. Uh, okay, oh wow, that is an interesting mechanic. Seems like we have done a temporary shift in gravity. I most certainly was not seeing that coming. But come it did. Now we have found an old book of songs. Most of them are about the dead living their tombs. Leaving their tombs, that is. So, so delightful. Okay, okay, this is gonna be interesting, okay. This is gonna take some skill. So I can tell you what we're seeing in a lot of this game is a lot of reusing areas in new context. Like the more I, I move forward, the more that things I've seen in the past become recontextualized. And that's an interesting approach because that's kind of the fun of a Metroidvania is discovering something and then realizing its per not knowing its purpose and realizing its purpose later. And this creator has been able to kind of like, um, distill that into kind of like this Breath of the Wild type uh, chemistry mechanics where you see something and you don't know how its interaction works, but then you discover it later on and that now recontextualizes stuff that you could have done earlier. Um, I haven't seen too many places yet where we have to actually like backtrack to someplace else to apply that knowledge but those may come a bit more moving forward. I've also seen a lot of, like, gameplay that revolves around careful play. Like, this isn't really, like, meant to be quick so far. This is very puzzle-like. Like, this is, um... They do not change the mechanics to go with... with, um, the gravity in, in the way that I would expect to, but it does make sense, so it's, um... It's like, I gotta sit down, I gotta think for a bit. So I got a tome, so now... I'm going to have to discover what I'm supposed to be doing with it. Okay, so, oh, so this activates these things everywhere. So that's what that shows me. And now, I'm going to go back. What I would say is that, um, what might be effective that they may be doing, they may be bringing us back to that dangerous area. Maybe now it will say that it's not going to be dangerous. Or maybe even though now, despite the fact that it is dangerous, we can safely surpass because of our new ability to walk into these zones. Um, that may not happen at all. It's just me spitballing. Let's, um, let's go and discover for ourselves what's going to happen. Okay, so we're moving up. Okay, so it seems to be guiding me over, the, over here. Nope, nope, oh no, it's saying that I have lost my teleport. So it's essentially trapped me into going this way? Let's see if it's trapped us. Perhaps what we thought was our blessing was our curse. Or maybe now we're, oh, maybe we're supposed to come back here. Oh, there's water everywhere now. That's an interesting turn of events. We got a hundred argon for it, though. So we do have some areas where wire has now become useful for certain types of interesting platforming things. So now we're going to have to make certain trade-offs at times. Like, okay, do we want to... Oh, 
Well, it led me back to the beginning. I feel like I'm going to have to go into that danger area eventually. I just kind of don't want to. I want to see, like, if I continue forward with the way that it's displaying things, like, what will happen. One thing I can say earlier is um, I probably could have learned some of those mechanics earlier with these enemies here. Um, I'm trying to remember if they were here before or not, actually. I felt like I was getting beat up by something before and not quite getting it. And these guys are a little difficult for me. Even now that I know a bit more. And say, I think that I really learned the mechanic with the plants. And I think the slimes just kind of threw me off a bit. Like, I think I understand the slimes now and why I didn't really do that well before. But I wonder if, like, that's kind of the intention is like now this enemy that you saw before that was kind of scary is now like much easier to to deal with. And the emerald fire. I still haven't quite gotten that one. I could probably fall down that hole and get that though. If there's something down here. Nah. So it seems like this is just looping back on where we've been before. So, I'm going to want to say that that danger path might be our only path forward. Because we clearly still can't go out here yet. So, I do have another theory. Let's see. Oh, first, let me test our theory of if there's a... Oh, there we go. See, I missed that before. I realized on the second time back through... That you could fall down here, most likely. And be directly here to get your reward. 20 Argon. Now we're going to move forward a little bit more. And we're going to test out and see if we teleport here yep this allows us to go this way so I feel like what this is indicating is that we just kind of have to come this way like the, the, there's just no way around this Okay, guys, here we go. Oh, that still hit me. Oh, man. Okay. I don't know if we want to go for this one. But we're going for it. I'm not good at Legend of Zelda 2. Why is this happening to me? Okay. Nope, I'd messed it up. So I have a feeling that this is exactly what was planned for. What I have a feeling is that perhaps the the feel of this entire area is meant to calm you down. Because if you notice at the beginning of the game, we had much scarier music. Now it seems like this area has peaceful music, and perhaps there's a reason why. Perhaps the reason why it has peaceful music is because it's meant to throw you off when you have to go back into what ostensibly may actually be the real game. Like, up until now, the game was, like, just teaching you the mechanics and saying, like, oh, you thought this was going to be, like, an easy game. Like, no, this game is, like, a, a hardcore, like, difficult game. We were just, like, playing the training wheels on. Like, this place is scary. This place is dangerous. You don't want to be here. Where before, it was more like a, a somewhat eerie but pleasant jaunt through a cave. Now, like, I'm instantly being tested on, like, how well I know these mechanics, as the ledge mechanics here show. Okay. Yeah, 
a thousand argon. So that was worth it. Okay. I don't know what put that out. But let's do that. I do wonder if the color of the flames is going to have anything to do with anything after a while. I feel like there'd be no use in making them different if there wasn't. But you see, the platforming has gotten even more intense now. Like, the entire atmosphere of this game has been recontextualized once again. The developer, oh, now has given me some kind of terrifying enemy, but it took a bunch of damage. But I know that it exists now. Like, once again, they're using the same mechanics they used earlier, but in a much more dire situation. So, we've been able to get our little 20 Argon reward. I believe we also saw that something we did, I believe, destroyed that thing. I believe the pots fell on its head, showing, once again, how everything in this game comes together. Oh, and it allowed me to... And there we have... There we have it. We are looping back, I believe, the famous... Once again, loop back around. The famous loop back around to where you were before and see things. It's like, now I see these enemies. Now I see there was an, a much easier way to take them out. I'm still, but I am a bit perplexed as to where to go to now, because I feel like I've explored this whole area. saying I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to be doing now but that actually does um, work out for us because I do actually believe that this is gonna have to be the end of this episode um, I did have one other thought that perhaps that was even meant to in a very mind gamey way and for once again I may be reading things into this that do not exist so please, by any means, do not take this as, as fact, but I did notice that, whether intentional or not, I did come back. Um, I should probably try going forward again real quick. I probably will real quick, then start recording again. And um, But I came back. But if you come back, then you wonder, is the message meant to be read the other way? Like, is the area we were in good? And is the area we're in now the place where it's saying danger, turn away? Like, is another turn of your head? Is this beautiful area actually the place that's secretly really menacing? And is that area meant to be better? Perhaps not. Perhaps I'm reading too much into that. Perhaps I just didn't see which way it was forward, but you never know with these types of things. That's the fun of, of games in development. There's no way that you can know which way the, the directors and people's minds are creating are going to go. Um, because there's nothing out there yet for it to ruin the surprise. So you get to be surprised every step of the way. So um, until next time, thank you once again. This has been Alan Carter from Playtest from Geek Public Broadcasting. And until next time, I am encouraging you all to engage brightly. Thanks. Bye.